Hi, um, I'm here to talk to you this time about the normal distribution. This is section 4.5, the second part of uh, quiz 3A. So the first were a couple of continuous random variable problems. And now we're still into continuous, but this is the special normal distribution. So it's probably the most special of the, nor of the continuous curves. I think most people have heard of the bell curve or Ga Gaussian curve. So there's a couple of problems on this, uh, quiz, it, quiz 3A about the normal. And then, uh, again, that's the one you're turning in on Tuesday. And if you want extra practice, I made another one. I called it quiz 3B. It's totally optional. Um, most of these are normal random variable problems just to give you extra practice. And I also showed how you can compute these values in Minitab. So you can always uh, integrate in Maple or use the table. But Minitab is also nice for finding some of these probabilities. So I went ahead and, and showed you how to do that on this on quiz 3B if you're interested. So enough of shuffling through this. Let me go to the lecture, so section 4.5. So like I said, that's, this is probably the most special of the continuous distributions. There's, there's lots of continuous distributions, exponentials, log normals, you know, chi-squareds, t's. Uh, so this was the inventor is Gaussian. And this is a $10 Deutschmark. It should not $10, but 10 Deutsche Mark. And what I think is so nice, well, here's Gauss. Here's the picture of Gauss. But you might see on this on this money, maybe you'll be able to see in your notes, uh, on this piece of money, there actually is uh, the plot of a, a normal curve. But not only that, like really tiny here. And uh, I can show you in class because I have a couple of these bills. But really tiny right there is the density function. Uh, the probability density function of a normal, which is, and you'll see this a lot the rest of the course, f of x is 1 over the square root of 2 pi, that's under the square root, times sigma e to the negative x minus mu squared, and that's divided by 2 sigma squared here, and that's defined for all real numbers. Um, but they did, fit, they did fit that little formula there. So there's the formula right there on that piece of money. And in class, when we use that project, projector, I think I can blow it up and show you it's there. So that's really cool. On a piece of money, there's a formula. So you could go into your final like, oh, do you got your normal curve? Uh, I think it's pretty, pretty nice. So um, definitely some we don't see on American money. So I, I have to appreciate that. Um, so the idea has been around a long time, and even if a random variable isn't normally distributed, if, if you combine of n enough of them, uh, if you add random variables together, a lot of times uh, in the limit they'll converge to a normal. <coughs> so there's a demonstration, this is called a coin quonks, but I, uh, my dad had a friend make one, it's a wooden version. And it doesn't quite work right um, because there's not enough rows. But I'll show you one day in class. If you if you want to think about uh, you know what it looks like, it's really just a modern day version of Plinko. And you know you have these rows and the balls pass over. So I went ahead and um, brought up this website. Let me see. I had it running before I started. So here it is. Let me restart because a lot of the balls have dropped already. But so this is the idea. So each of these rows is just a pin, and they're dropping balls. You can think of them as a random variable. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You could consider really that you have, um, you know, eight rows of a yes/no decision. Every time you hit a pin, you're either going to go left or right. And unfortunately, in this app, it lets you jump a couple of um, spaces over. But if everyone was a left-right decision, decision, yes, no, there's a lot of ways that balls can get back to the center. I mean, you can do a left, right, left, right, left, right, and you're at the center. You know, you could do a left, left, right, right, left, left, and you're back at the center. Um, to get all the way to the end, like if you started here, to get all the way to the other end, you'd have to have eight lefts, or you'd have to have eight rights, which isn't very... Um, Right, the probability of that is the least of anything. So uh, I think it's easy to see how when you start combining random variables, that urge, you know, to to again the center always builds up because you, there's so many patterns that give you back the center, and to be far left or far right could only happen perhaps in one given way. So so anyway, I, I kind of like that. It's very mesmerizing. If I have this on in class, people usually that's all I can just entrance them with that picture. Um, so anyway, this is just uh, over here. I'm just explaining 
what that was and that this balls are dropping and each one has probably 0.5 each way. Um, this, I'm just saying there's lots of applications of the normal random variable, IQs, weights, heights. You know, there's all there's that bell to a lot of situations, right? You have your center and then extreme right or left, unlikely. Um, this is just saying this is the probability density function of a normal curve. So that's the one I just gave you above, 1 over square root of 2 pi times sigma. Make sure sigma is not under that square root. E to the negative x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. Um, in case you're wondering, uh, there's a way to show that this is legitimate with polar coordinates, that it always integrates to 1 over real numbers. Um, I'm going for not a proof, but uh, a con hopefully something convincing you. I went ahead and stuck this in um, in Maple. I asked it to do an eval f. It evaluates to 1. So it, it will always evaluate to 1. It's just that um, either, the, either the negative x squared doesn't have a closed form antiderivative. So um, the proof is... It's a little bit complicated, but we can do it. But what I want you to know now is f of x is always a legal density function. So in Maple, I put in various uh, mu's and sigma's. So mu is uh, the mean, the center, and sigma is the spread. So mu zero means that's where your bell, the bell part of the bell curve is. Here's a mu zero, mu zero. Um, so mu controls where the center is, the bell, and then sigma. Uh, has to do with how how the, the spread, how wide or how thin. So this we call our standard normal curve with a mean of 0 and a, and a sigma of 1. All the tables you see, the standard normals tables, are based on, on this curve. But here's one with sigma equal to 2. It's a little bit fatter. Um, over there we have sigma 1 fourth. It's a little bit skinnier. Here I moved uh, mu to 1, sigma 1. So all it is is the above graph, but with a shift of 1 to the right. Um, here's mu 1, sigma 2, mu negative 1. So you can move, mu can be anywhere, and then sigma is always positive. It's it's the spread, it's the, you know, kind of the thickness, well, wideness, thickness of the, of the graph, how spread out it is. So it's quite easy to work with. I mean, we're going to do the same ideas we've done with other continuous random variables. It's just that it's not a nice density function. So consider you're on a planet where uh, male heights x are... Uh, have a normal distribution with a mean of 67.5 inches and a standard deviation of 2 inches. What proportion or what's the probability you meet a man on this planet and he's between 66 and 72 inches tall? All that is is here's the bell curve. Uh, I put my values into the 1 over square root of 2 pi formula. And then I'm just going to integrate um, between 66 and 72, whatever that area is. That's the probability. So over here, you can see that's what I did. All I did was put uh, there's sigma is 2, there's sigma squared, and there's mu up there. Plug and chug, uh, integrate it, and you get a number. Okay. If you don't want to integrate, another way to do this is to use a normal table. But in order to use a normal table, you have to convert your normal to a standard normal. There's many, many normals in the whole wide world, right? Every every mu gives us a different normal and every sigma. So the one that we use and make a table for is mu equals 0, sigma equals 1. And that's the yellow table uh, I passed out in class. Here it is. So it even shows you uh, there's the function for a normal. 0, 1, so 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma is 1, and then uh, mu is 0, so this is the standard normal. And then this just finds probability uh, area under the curve up to a given point. So for example, if my given point is, let me go up a little bit, I lost my tens place. So let's look at this value here, uh, negative 1.9. Seven. This says the area to the left of the curve up till negative 1.97 is 0 0.0244. So if we went up here, right, and I made a value at this is uh, negative, this is zero, negative one, negative. It's hard to tell. Zero, negative one, negative two. I think that's it right there. Um, the amount of area in the tail past negative one point nine seven is just this little point zero zero point zero two four four. So um, I think it helps too with the table. It shows you it's always computing the area to the left. So if you want the right area, you're going to have to subtract from one. But in general, you just get that left that left area. So let me go back to our problems. 
and let's go ahead and find um, let's find one of these so I'm going to assume that Z comes that is a standard normal and I can use a standard normal table determine the probability that Z is less than negative 1.25 so there's negative 1 negative 1.25 is there and I want to find this area right there you can tell it's, it's not huge so I'm going to go back to my table and look for negative 1.25 so let's go down a bit. So here's uh, here's negative 1.2, and I go across. Negative 1.25 is 0 0.1056. So 0 0.1056. Okay, that was nice. I now want to know the area to the right of 1.25. Well, by symmetry, you can see these are the same value. So again, it's going to be 0 0.1056. Okay, I think I put one of those on the on the quiz. Uh, I'm just trying to show you how I found it. Right, it's negative 1.2 and then five for the hundreds place. So let me um, let me do just one more. How about the area between negative one and one? So here's negative one and here's one. For me, the easiest way to do it, I think, is subtract or find the area to the left of 1 and then subtract off the area to the left of negative 1. So often I'll say P of, find the probability Z is less than 1 and then subtract off Z being less than a negative 1. So if I go back to my chart, so less than 1, I'm over here, so you can see uh, less than 1, here's 1.0, so 8413. That'll be 0 0.8413 minus area to the left of negative 1. So we can almost see it here. So here's negative 1, uh, 1587. So that'll be uh, minus 0 0.1587. So there's that one. And we could do others. I think I put this F on your quiz. And then uh, this is just saying, again, if you if you don't have a standard normal to start with, you can always convert it. So if you have any x that's not normal 0, 1, to shift it over to be centered at 0, I'm going to subtract off mu. And to shrink it or stretch it to have um, a standard deviation of 1, I'm going to divide by sigma. So to convert any normal to a standard normal so that you can use the table, you always subtract off mu, divide by sigma. I call it a z-score. The book calls it a z-score. Um, in general, just so you know, um, on a normal curve, about 66% of your data lies within one standard deviation, 95 within two, and 99.7 within three. So let's go ahead and do, I think I'll just do those two problems because I think I'm, well, maybe just one, I'm starting to get long. So um, the weight of oranges uh, has a normal distribution. So I'm going to let x equal weight of oranges. And I'm saying uh, they have the shape of, that's what that little squiggly, of a normal um, with a mean of 16 and a sigma of 2. Okay, so pretty much I know the, the shapes or the weights of these oranges has a bell-shaped curve. That wasn't great. Uh, here's the mean of 16, and then one standard deviation out is 2. Okay, so the question is, what's the probability that I take an orange and it weighs more than 17 ounces? So probability, the weight of the orange is more than 17 ounces. So if you're somebody that likes um, integrating, we're just going to integrate under a curve that's a little bit nasty looking, but it's easy enough. So 17 to infinity, 1 over square root of 2 pi on the outside times sigma times e to the negative x minus 16 squared, and this is all divided by 2 times 2 squared dx. And I would get the probability um, 0 0.3085, and that would work. Or I can convert to a z-score. So I'm going to go ahead and take this down here and do the z-score option. So um, probability x is equal to 17. Um, if we're talking about how many standard deviation of the way 17 is from 16, I'm going to do the conversion. So that's the probability of z. I write z in because I know I'm converting to a standard normal. 
17 minus 16 divided by 2. So this is the probability that z is greater than 0.5. And so again, big, bigger than um, 0.05, I'm going to go to the table and look for uh, z less than a negative 0.5. And I bet it's 3085. So let's go to the table. And we wanted less than a negative 0.5, so we have to come down here. So there it is, negative 0.5. You can see a little hand is 0.3085. So we did it both ways, and we still get that value. OK, so that's a z-score problem. But again, you can do it either way. And uh, example four, I would do similarly. Um, also, we can go backwards, right? We can use the table and go the other direction. So we can find um, area. If we're given the area, we can find what point much mass much must math match up with it. So let me just do seven and just show you what I mean. Um, Mensa, uh, that's a club or uh, an organization. I think you have to take a test to get into it, but who wants to do that? So Mensa, um, anybody that has an IQ in the upper 2% is eligible, eligible to join. So let's look at IQs. IQs are normally distributed. So they have a bell curve. Um, with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. And uh, so what score does somebody need IQ to get into Mensa? Mensa only takes uh, the top 2%. So I want to know the value that leaves 2% uh, in the upper tail, which is also 98%. In the lower tail, or we'd say that's the 98th um, percentile. So, I mean, I think the easiest way to do is if, if we could find what z-score this is, then we could get, just convert um, the IQ. Uh, we can take the z-score to convert to an IQ that makes sense. So let's figure out how what value leaves 2% in the tail. So going up here, you can see numbers here. And it looks like, right, right in here, right? So it looks like for a number such as... Uh, negative 2.05 or 2.06, um, it leaves about 2%, like this one's negative, so it leaves 2% in the left tail. But if I went over there to uh, 2 on this side, I want some that leaves 98% to the left. And so again, you can see about 2 point, if I scoot over a little bit there. So yeah, right in here, 2.05, 2.06, so 2.06. So um, so let's go back to our problem. I know a z-score of 2.06 will get me uh, up in that 2% uh, tail. So, so all I have to do is say, well, what's that equivalent to on the IQ scale? So um, an IQ of 100 plus two standard deviations to the right would give me a value such that 98% is less. And so not perfect, but this comes out to be 100 and what? I mean, that's like 30, 30 something. I don't know. Um, it's always the math stuff. So whatever 2.06 times 15 is, excuse this, um, 2.06 times 15 is uh, 30.9. So let's go back to that. Uh, so 130.9 IQ. This is the IQ you would need to get into Mensa. So as you can see, I come backwards. Or, I mean, I guess you could do it by integrating. You could say, um, what value, let's call it C, is such that when I integrate under this normal curve, 1 over square root of 2 pi times sigma, which was 15, uh, e to the negative x minus 100 squared divided by 2 times 15 dx is equal to um, c to infinity is 0 0.02. So I believe this this will work. I mean, you might have to take a little coaxing in maple and eval f, but I'm trying to find the c such that the area in this right tail is 0 0.02. So that should give us approximately the same value. So, well, before I get too far into this, that's how it is. And then the quiz 3b is extra practice on this if you'd like it. And uh, I think I'll just leave it there. It's getting long. Okay. Have a good break.